All right, so I've got this Miller and Kressel. This is a MX90 subwoofer that came in. And I'm just doing a couple quick tests. I've got some music going into it right now, just from a little MP3 player. And the customer tells me it has this low rumbling sound that it makes most of the time. And uh, I'm not hearing anything right now. Let me go ahead and pause this. I don't hear anything. Let's take a look at the front. Okay, so here's the front, the woofer, and there is a little bit of physical damage on this one. I think it might need a recone. I think the foam's probably getting tired in it. Uh, but this one actually has another woofer up in here. Kind of hard to see. It's kind of dark up in there, but uh, there is another speaker up under there. I'm not sure if it's a passive uh, radiator or if it's actually driven. I haven't taken the screws out of the back to look inside yet, but... I'll go ahead and do it. So I've got the microphone right up to the speaker here. I'm not hearing any rumbling at all. So I think it's just gonna be a matter of, let's go ahead and do a quick visual inspection on it and see what it looks like inside. Okay, well here are the internals of the unit. You can see it's got one big STK4048V power pack hybrid IC right there. Not too much to it. It's got a couple of LM348 op amps here. And up here is just the uh, crossover frequency and base level pots, as well as the input terminals here. So there's really not much that can make a, a low rumbling sound in a unit like this, short of a failing hybrid power pack IC or a failing op amp. And I'm not gonna say that's out of the question, but op amps typically are very, very resilient. Rarely do they fail unless they've been physically or electrically damaged somehow. Power pack hybrid ICs, yes, those things do fail quite often. I also see one, two, three, four, five, six electrolytic capacitors on this board. And of course, you know the history I have with electrolytic capacitors and high ESRs. Actually, there's one more right there. So seven capacitors total. So I'll try to get this board up and out and do a quick ESR check on these capacitors because if these op amps here don't get good smooth voltage, it's possible to have distortion or just intermittent noise on those lines because of a noisy power supply. Okay, so I've got the board flipped up here. I've got my ESR meter out and verified lead integrity is good. Right at zero ohms, perfect. And so these capacitors, I went ahead and made a red mark on the board where every capacitor is. These capacitors right here, these five are 100 microfarad, 63 volts. These two small capacitors are 10 microfarad, 63 volts. With the 100s, I'd like to see one ohm, ideally half an ohm or less. So the first one, I get about five ohms. That one's definitely bad. Second one, I get about 25 ohms. That one is definitely out there. Third one, eh, one and a half ohms, still bad in my book. Now this one, it's kind of hard to get to without blocking the camera. That one I see just under half an ohm. That's where I'd like to see all of them. And now for the tens, one and a half ohms, that one's perfectly fine and just barely over one ohm. That one is perfectly fine too. So it looks like at a minimum we need to replace all five of these 100 microfarad capacitors, especially this one. That one's 25 ohms. That's absolutely terrible for a 100 microfarad capacitor. So I think I'll go ahead and just uh, chat with my customer and see if he just wants to go ahead and replace those capacitors. Okay, so back on the Miller and Kressel MX90, I'm gonna go ahead and re-surround these two speakers in this unit. So I have a set of replacement surrounds and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the defective surrounds and install some new surrounds. So most of this, I'm just gonna go ahead and time-lapse because it's just gonna to be too labor-intensive for me to narrate exactly what's going on here. But hopefully you can watch the time-lapse and get a gist of what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and slice the old surround because it's pretty damaged. You can see the creases right in here. It, I mean, I'm barely touching it and look at that. It's just rotted from age. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the old surround completely. Uh, I mean, it doesn't take much. There it is. It's gone, just like that. 
So I'm going to razor knife the old surround off and then very gently try to razor knife the surround off of the speaker. I'm going to remove the cardboard support, razor knife most of the surround off of the speaker basket, and then I'll go ahead and test fit the new surround. Hopefully it fits well. Apply the adhesive. Okay, so I have the cone completely cleaned off as much as I can. There's a little bit of old glue there, but it's going to be okay. I've cleaned the basket completely, scraped it down to virtually bare metal everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and lay my surround on here and just so I can add the glue on the inner surface right here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a good bead of glue all the way around there. Hopefully it'll take very well. Okay, so I've got a nice bead all the way around. Now I'm going to very carefully flip this over and try to center it as best I can. And then very gently press the glue into place on the cone. So I'm going to go around this several times. The first is just initially to get the glue bead to set. And I'm providing support underneath while I press the glue onto the cone. Very lightly just getting it to take and become a little bit tacky on here. So I'm trying not to disturb the geometry of the cone whilst I'm doing this. And then once it's basically tacked all the way around. I'll go ahead and add more pressure. So I'm going to go around one more time with more pressure to press out any bubbles in the glue. This all has to be done in a very timely fashion. So I'm going to go around probably two or three times while adding pressure each time and I'm backing up with my finger underneath. I'm pressing like this. So I'm pretty happy at this point. The cone moves in and out very freely. It's not rubbing. It's more or less centered. I can move it up and down, right and left with no voice coil rubbage against the magnet. So now I need to let this cure before I go ahead and reattach the rest of the foam to the speaker basket and then put the cardboard gasket back in place. Okay, so I'm going to let this sit for a few hours and then I'll go ahead and come back and we'll reattach the foam to the basket and then add the gasket. So next, I'm going to very gently lift up one corner and just go ahead and apply a bead to the basket. So I'm going to go around a couple times just to make sure I have enough glue on the basket itself. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm clear of the voice coil and then very gently begin spreading the glue around. Okay, so it's starting to peel up slightly, but I'm not really concerned about that because I'm going to put the gasket on it. I'm going to set it face down. It moves very freely with no scrapage at all right now. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a light bead all the way around. And I've got my gasket ready to go. So I went ahead and marked where the top was on my gasket. I'm just going to make sure my screw holes are centered correctly.
and very gently press it into place. Absolutely perfect. No voice coil rubbage against the magnet whatsoever. So next I'm just going to go ahead and place this face down so the weight of the speaker can cause this glue to cure between the surround and the basket. We'll place that upside down, we'll let it set overnight, then we'll come back to it tomorrow. So whenever you're changing capacitors on one of these boards, always either take a picture, draw a roadmap, do something to verify the correct position of the capacitors. I've seen them go in backwards. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little black mark on every negative of these capacitors so I can get them back in in the correct orientation. Because once again, I have seen boards silk screened incorrectly. So you always want to do this just to make sure you get the caps back with the correct polarity. You don't want to put a capacitor in backwards. They don't like it. They will explode. This is from experience. Okay, I've got all the new capacitors installed and I just want to go ahead and resolder these pins for the Molex connector right here because I've had problems with these breaking loose from the circuit board and causing problems just because it's in a high vibration environment. They don't secure these in any fashion. There's no extra bonding, no celastic, no silicone. So I just want to go ahead and add some fresh solder to these pins just to get a little bit better mechanical integrity on these things. All right, so that should be good. Now I'll go ahead and show you some of the uh, the 100 microfarad caps are the ones I was really concerned with. So let me get the ESR meter set up here. Okay, so first off, lead integrity, absolutely perfect, right in the center of zero. So here's the 100 microfarad caps, the new ones in the circuit. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. 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 And perfect. These are all good quality Panasonic capacitors I chose to replace in these subwoofers. So I think it's gonna be excellent once we get this thing done. Uh, the problem I had was uh, these, especially this one that measured, what was it like almost 30 ohms? That is the filter capacitor after these dropping resistors. Remember on the other MK subwoofer, these were broken off of the board. Well, this appears to be a later version. It has much larger pads on the circuit board for these large resistors. I went ahead and resoldered them anyhow. They're absolutely perfect. I will add some silicone to those resistors just to make sure they're tacked down to the board securely as well. Okay, so I've got the power resistors secured to the board with some silicone RTV. Can definitely handle the heat these things are going to generate with no problem whatsoever. I've got all the capacitors replaced on the circuit board as well. Good high quality Panasonic capacitors here. And then I also want to go ahead and retention that one contact in the lower right hand corner as well as the eight other contacts in the speaker box. And I'm going to go ahead and check the ESR of the main filter capacitors as well. Okay, so here is the uh, connector to the speakers and from the power supply. So first let's go ahead and check lead integrity. Make sure we're right at zero and we are. So that's what I want to see. Anything above zero and that's a problem. So zero, perfect, zero, perfect. So the main filter caps are good. I can even put those two in series right here and check them in series. They're still absolutely zero, absolutely perfect. So next I'm just gonna go ahead and retension these connectors real quick and then we'll get the hot plate put back in it. Okay, so as before, I just wanna give these just a little more tension just so they bite a little bit better. And it's just a matter of going in here with a screwdriver and just gently bending the leads around just so they bite just a little bit harder. Even if some of them become out of shape, I'm not too terribly worried about that. Once I put the pin back in it, it's going to go ahead and re reshape them. Okay, so there it is. All those pins retentioned. Actually, only six of them because two of them are not used. I went ahead and retentioned this pin on the circuit board already. So we're ready to put it back together. 
All right, I certainly hope you enjoyed the video on the repair of the Miller & Crystal MX-90. Remember, you can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. While you're down there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much once again. Bye-bye.